Lily, why isn't my dinner ready? You haven't cooked for me these past few days. Because I've been working overtime, Patrick. Your dinner is in the fridge, so heat it up and eat it. Are you for real? Why are you pissed? Are you seriously going to make me do extra work when I just got home from work? Oh my god, all you have to do is put it in the microwave. Be thankful that it's not frozen food. Also, you said about extra work, but don't you only work in the afternoon? I work from early in the morning to late afternoon. So shouldn't you be thanking me instead of complaining? Are you talking back to me? I just told you straight fact. Would it be okay if I divorce you? Probably not, so do your job, you lazy ass. Maybe this is why you need to work overtime. I actually have no problem with that. You don't need to act all tough. <laughs> anyway, hurry up and come home and cook me dinner. Um, didn't I tell you that I'm busy because I got promoted and need to take over jobs and plan events? Okay, and? It doesn't matter to me. Anyways, I gotta go back, so eat your food. I want a nice meal once in a while. It was a mistake marrying you. Please divorce me ASAP. Okay. Um, can I go now? I'm busy. You better cook for me tomorrow. I have work tomorrow, so probably not. Where the hell did you go? Where's my dinner? I just told you that I'm at the hospital now. Are you seriously still there? Yes, I think I work too much. I'm going to stay at the hospital tonight and get an examination tomorrow, okay? I'm also going to take a few days off from work. Do you think that's okay? You'll cause problems to the company and me. I will to the company, but why you? You won't be able to do household chores and cook for me. You're joking, right? Of course not. So I guess it's okay for us to divorce, right? Why are you talking about the divorce now? Aren't you worried about your wife's health? <laughs> Why would I be? Anyways, I want you to cook dinner, so hurry up and leave the hospital. Eat out or take out from somewhere. Jeez, you're such a scumbag to not worry about me and threaten me with divorce. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You better come home tomorrow. Okay, fine. Did you forget what we talked about yesterday? Where the hell are you? What did we talk about? You coming home today! I was being nice to you yesterday! What? Nice? Seriously? Yes! I was okay with you not coming home yesterday! If you don't come home now, I can't eat dinner today either! Okay, and? What's with that attitude? Don't you know that I needed your help? Why would I help you? Deal with it by yourself and listen to your husband. You are such a dick. You know what? You are being such a bitch, so leave the hospital right now and come home to cook dinner. Absolutely not. Why? Stop making excuses. If you can't move, then why don't you crawl or something? Are you for real? Yes. If you don't come home, that means it's okay to divorce, right? We're actually divorced already, so I don't know what you're talking about. What? Crawl home and cook dinner? <laughs> Sorry, but I need to laugh at this. Whatever. What do you mean we're divorced? Well, I was fed up with you thinking you're the boss, so I sent the divorce papers in. Stop lying. I haven't filled it out yet. Yes, you did. You threw the signed papers at me a while ago. I thought you threw it out. Why would I throw out something that important? I was finding the right time to send it in, so thank you very much. Thank God we're divorced now. Hallelujah. Shut up. Wait, are you discharged from the hospital? Nope, just wanted fresh air. I'm actually going to stay at the hospital this week. Can we please make the divorce invalid? Aren't you the one that gave me the signed papers first? I yes, but I wasn't going to divorce you for real. That was a threat. <laughs> Sorry, but I'll not change my feelings. Also, I'm not going home, so please pay the mortgage, okay? What? I need to pay for it? Of course. I've been paying for it, but since I moved out, it's your responsibility now. Will you be okay? Isn't your monthly salary about $600? No, please don't say that you're going to move out. I still love you. How many times do I need to tell you that we're done? Do you not understand what I'm saying? Are you an idiot? I didn't expect for you to divorce me, and there's no way that I can help you pay the mortgage. You're earning a lot more money than me, so can you help me? Are you joking right now? Why would I help someone like you? You treated me like shit every day, haven't paid even a penny for the mortgage, and didn't help me even though I was carried to the hospital. You're a self-centered douchebag. Uh, look, I'm sorry, but isn't it common sense for the wife to do the household chores? Wait, did you divorce me because you didn't want to do that? Wow, what is wrong with you? I just explained why I divorced you. Maybe you were the reason why I was carried to the hospital. Me? 
There was nothing but stress living with you. I wonder why I married a person who doesn't even earn money, doesn't do household chores, and threatens me by saying the word divorce like a million times. Sorry, but you're gonna face this problem from now on. This is not like you, Lily. Why don't we talk about this, okay? We're husband and wife, right? We're not, so no thanks. What is there to talk about anyways? It's just a waste of time. What do you want from me? Come on, we're a family, so let's work things out and help each other. Work things out, help each other. <laughs> Haven't I done everything for you? You never helped me, and I never heard the word thank you once. Like I said before, it's common sense for the wife to do everything, so why don't you appreciate it? What year are you living in? I did help you before, actually. Really? When? Uh, well, I can't think right now, but I have, though, maybe. Are you sure about that? Uh, yes, anyways, why did you send the divorce papers without my permission? Let's make it invalid, please, and come home, because there was no way I can pay for the mortgage. Nope. Good luck with that. Don't think about contacting me, saying that you can't pay, okay? Wait, please, don't leave me! Who's gonna do the household chores for me? You're a grown adult, so watch YouTube videos and do it by yourself. Why do we need to divorce? I mean, you threatened to divorce me a couple times, so all I did was listen and sent the papers. If you want to make it invalid, I'll hire a lawyer and divorce you no matter what. If that happens, will you be able to pay for the lawyer? Lawyer? Why are you exaggerating this story? Can we talk about this once? Absolutely not. You're wanting to talk means that you want to make it invalid, right? Okay, I'll hire a lawyer right now. Don't say something like that! Also, you can't just leave me at the house. Actually, I can because my parents packed all of my bags and moved it yesterday. What? When? Okay, wait, are you actually going to divorce me? Yes, how many times do I need to tell you? If you have anything to say, talk to the lawyer, okay? I think someone will contact you. Don't say that, you're scaring me. Hey, I promise I won't complain, even if you don't do the household chores. Wow, after all this, you still think that I'm going to do something for you? I think I'm turning stupid, so I'll excuse myself. If something bad happens to you, remember that everything is your fault, okay? Okay. If you have time to blab about something, why don't you start looking for YouTube videos? Patrick tried to contact me a couple times to ask if I can help pay the mortgage for him, but of course I said no and blocked him afterwards. I heard that he got kicked out of the house and the house was sold to someone else. He's now living in the middle of nowhere looking for a full-time job because he needed the money to live. On the other hand, I'm feeling much better and I'm back working living a stress-free life. My ex-girlfriend passed away. Oh no, really? What happened? My ex-girlfriend Karen died a sudden death. I'm going to go pay my respects tonight, so I won't be coming home. But she's your ex-girlfriend, right? Can't you just send a card or flowers? You're her ex-boyfriend. You don't need to pay your respects in person. That would be weird. But we used to be really close. I want to go see her family directly. Even after Karen and I broke up, we remained close friends. I can't believe that she's gone. Oh, I can see that you're really upset and you have every right to be, but do you really need to go pay your respects in person? It's a shame she's gone, but I still don't understand why you need to go over to her house. Won't it be uncomfortable for her family? Why would they be uncomfortable? They love me. I'm sure that they're grieving privately. Maybe you should just let them be for now. You could attend her funeral, but there's no need for you to visit her house. That's too much. I'm sure that her family will be surprised to see you. They won't be expecting you. You don't get it. They're like a second family to me. They won't be surprised. I'm close to her parents. I see. Was Karen married? No, she wasn't. Why do you ask? Well, if she was, it would be awkward for her husband to see Karen's ex-boyfriend show up. Look, you don't have to worry about anything. This is something that I want to do. I'm going and that's that. Okay, fine. Since you were close friends, I guess it makes sense that you still want to talk to her family. I'm going to see if her family needs help with anything. So, if necessary, I'm going to stay with them for more than one night. I see. 
I didn't know that you were so close to our family. I kind of thought that you would mention them to me. I mean, we've been married for a while now. So you and Karen were hanging out as friends even after we got married? Yes, sometimes. I tell you whenever I have plans to go see my friends. Yes, you do, but you have so many friends, I never know who you're with. This is the first time that I realized that you were still good friends with one of your ex-girlfriends. You could have mentioned that one of your friends was an ex-girlfriend that you were fairly serious about. I'm a little hurt that you failed to mention this to me. This is not the time for you to be jealous. Karen is dead. Stop being so selfish. I lost a good friend. If anything, you should be comforting me. Okay, okay, I'm sorry about that, you're right. I'm just surprised to know that you two are so close, but now is not the time to be jealous. Have a safe drive down to Karen's house. I'm at Karen's house now. I'm going to stay with her family for a while. I want to comfort them with my presence. I'm going to help them with the funeral arrangements. Do you really need to go out of your way to do all that? It's not like Karen is your ex-wife. It's a little weird. I'm just trying to be there for a family that needs emotional support right now. How is that weird? Why are you trying to make me feel guilty for doing something nice? That's not what I'm trying to do here. I just don't understand why this is so important to you. I told you that I'm close to our family as well. I want to help out. Can you imagine losing a daughter when she was still so young? They're devastated. Yes, I can imagine. So am I the one being unreasonable here? I just feel like something's not right. Yes, you're the one acting nuts. Uh, you really think so? Do you have enough clothes with you? Do you need me to bring you anything? That's okay, I have enough. You don't need to drive out here. It'll just make things complicated. But Karen was only a friend, right? I don't think that it would be weird for me to go over and hand you some extra sets of clothing. It's really not a problem for me. Tell me where you are right now. I'm in the next town over, but you don't need to come. I don't need extra clothes. Just leave me alone. I can take care of myself. Karen left us so early that I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. I want to help out with the funeral, and once that's over, I'll come home. You didn't even know her. You don't need to get involved. Okay, fine, but there's no need for you to be so cold to me. I was only trying to help. I had no idea that you cared so much about Karen. I would have liked to meet her. Let me know if you need anything from me then. Perry, tell me what's going on. What do you want? I'm busy. Don't text me unless it's an emergency. What are you busy with? You can't be serious. Karen's funeral, you idiot. I told you that. Yes, you did. I'm at a funeral. Don't text me. Why are you the one hosting the funeral? It doesn't make any sense. Huh? You were acting strange, so I decided to come to the funeral as well. I was shocked to see that you were the one hosting the funeral, so I left and now I'm trying to calm down at a nearby cafe. I went to Karen's funeral and for some reason my husband was the host. It doesn't make any sense. You need to explain to me. And then you said, thank you for coming to my wife Karen's funeral. Harry, you're my husband, right? What the hell is going on? I'm waiting for a reasonable explanation. So you were at the funeral then? How did you even know where the funeral was taking place? I looked up all the funeral homes in the town next to ours and I called them up to see if a woman named Karen around our age was being buried. I ask you again, why are you hosting her funeral? How is Karen your wife? I thought that I was your wife. 
I asked you to not come looking for me. Why did you do that? Don't ruin Karen's funeral. This is the last time that I get to be with her. How can you be angry about this? I am the one that's livid. This means that you were married to two women at the same time. Why am I only finding out about this now? What? I got the truth from your relatives at the funeral, so you can't deny anything. Not only were you cheating on me, but Karen was your concubine. Who told you that? You'd better not have said anything to my relatives to complicate matters. Like what? I might have mentioned that the person they thought was Karen's husband is actually married to me? How dare you! Today was supposed to be about Karen! Karen's family and relatives seemed shocked, but they were holding it together for the funeral. I guess that they'll want to talk to you after the funeral, though. You ruined the funeral! How could you? I can't believe that this is happening right now. Don't act like the victim here. I'm the one that wants to shout and scream. You did this to me, and I have every right to be furious with you. I'm filing for a divorce, and you're going to pay me for the damages. A divorce? Why? Is that necessary? Do you really have to ask, idiot? You had an affair, and on top of that, you let everyone think that she was your only wife. You've got to be kidding me, but you've made it easy for me. You basically made a public announcement about your affair at the funeral. It wasn't an affair. Karen really was my wife. I see. Then I guess our marriage wasn't what I thought it was. I'll never know which marriage meant more to you, but whatever. Now I know that all those late nights in the office and business trips were lies. You were with Karen. I never lied. This is a big misunderstanding. I already checked with your office. They say that you always leave the office on time and that your job doesn't require you to go on business trips. You what? So stop lying, you asshole. I want the truth. I was stupid enough to think that you were working hard. There were times when you told me that you were working late and had to spend the night at the office and you had so many business trips. I sat at home thinking that you were really busy with work. I never imagined that you had a whole other life that I didn't know about. You've got it all wrong. Let's talk about this. Let me explain it to you. You don't need to say anything. I get it. You're a real piece of shit and I should have never married you. Give me a chance to explain myself. No, you just want to make excuses and justify your actions. You made it very clear to me today that you were in love with Karen and that the life that I've been living is a big fat lie. Let's end this here. It was nice knowing you. We are husband and wife. We need to talk about this. By the way, Karen's family didn't seem to know that you were married to me. I'm sure that they're very upset with you right now, as am I. How can you do this to Karen's family? They just lost their daughter. And they love me. What are they going to think now? You didn't have to go out of your way to complicate things. Yes, you said that before, but I have no obligation to listen to you. Karen's family told me that you told them that you couldn't legally marry her because of your religion. I had no idea that you were so religious. Karen's family did not appreciate being lied to like that. I bet that they'll be suing you too. Why would they sue me? Melanie, you need to calm down. There's no need for you to sue me. We can work this out. Well, first of all, you need to pay me alimony for lying and cheating on me. And I'm divorcing you ASAP. I can't believe that you were cheating on me this entire time. I'm a fool. And you were telling everyone that Karen was your wife. How could you do this to me? 
Don't you care enough about me at all? This is all so stupid. It makes me want to laugh. But Karen's gone now. You have nothing to worry about. You're my only wife now, and I won't do anything to jeopardize that anymore. How can you tell me not to worry? Karen's death must be so convenient for you right now. You're a monster. Karen might be dead, but you shouldn't disrespect her like this. I've never met her, but I feel sorry for her. Meeting you was the biggest mistake of her life. And you're going to go to hell for what you did to the both of us. Don't be so dramatic. You need to calm down. We can work out our issues. I'm open to getting some marriage counseling. There's no need because I'm divorcing you. I won't change my mind. You do remember that you only have your job because my father is on the executive board, right? What does that have to do with anything? I'm sure that my father wouldn't want you at the same company as him when he finds out what you did to me. He'll fire you for sure. He wouldn't do that. I can't lose my job over this. What am I going to do? How am I going to pay my living expenses? I've been a good husband to you. You never doubted me until today. Did you think that you could marry more than one person? What world do you live in? You should move to a country that permits polygamy. I'm divorcing you and getting alimony. That's the least that you could do for me. I won't ever forgive you and you mean nothing to me now. I'm telling my parents about this and you'll be fired. Karen's parents are already upset with me. Do you really need to involve your parents too? I've never seen them so mad. Today would have gone well if you hadn't gotten involved. How can you try to blame this on me, you dumbass? We all have the right to be mad at you. You did this to us. Own up to it. You don't deserve to have anyone on your side. And you'll lose your job. This is the punishment that you asked for. Why are you being so harsh? I just lost Karen. I'm not harsh. You need to deal with this on your own. You should lose everything and become homeless. You can live on a riverside and feed on wild grass. How can you wish this on me? How could I not? Goodbye, Harry. I can't wait for you to rot in hell. Once Karen's funeral was over, her family wanted to have a word with Harry. They were going to sue him for creating a life with Karen that was based on a big lie. As I had predicted, my father was furious with Harry and he was fired from his company. Harry had no choice but to pay money to both me and Karen's family, but he was jobless and homeless. It's gonna take him a very long time to pay what is owed to us. But he deserves every bit of it. He shouldn't have messed with either me or Karen in the first place. Now that I'm divorced from Harry, I'm free from all of the pain. I'm glad that I didn't spend the rest of my life being married to a total fraud. I hope that Harry spends the rest of his life regretting his poor choices and he better pay me alimony no matter how long it takes. Hey, are you home? Open up. Tina? Where are you? Right in front of your house. How long are you going to make me wait? I'm sorry, were we expecting you today? No! Do I need a reason to come to my son's house? Is that what you're implying? Uh, no. I'm out, so I can't come to the door. We weren't expecting any visits. Work? Your office is near the house, right? Come over here immediately. I can't. It doesn't work that way. Please understand. So you're telling me to wait hours for you to come home? How dare you? You know I work full time. You're the one coming unannounced. Wouldn't you think it's obvious that you're in the wrong? None of your cheeky business. Ugh, oh, whatever. I still can't be there right now. I have to earn a living. Call your son. I can't get through with my son. That's why I'm here, isn't it? We didn't ask of you. What? Your son's home, by the way. 
Wake him up if you please. He'll let you in. What? Wake him up? Is he still sleeping? He was out late and came home in the morning. He was drinking, so I don't think he'll be up till afternoon. He was out that long? Oh, my boy. He must be so stressed. I guess so? Is there malice in what you're saying? Of course. I'm saying you're the one responsible. My son never took a sip of alcohol until he married you. You must be a bad influence to him, stressing him out. Are you saying that our marriage is the cause of his stress? It must be least affecting him somehow, living far away from me, never allowed to see his parents. He must be having a hard time. I always tell him that he can go wherever or whenever as much as he pleases. As a matter of fact, he actually visits you every weekend. And what is wrong with that? You won't let him be free to come back home. Okay, I never said that. He was out drinking with his friends last night. He's not sleeping in because he's stressed. He's just tired because he stayed up the night. Even so, his drinking habit is all because of you. You're owning to this stress. I seriously doubt that. He seems to be living a stress-free lifestyle as far as I know. What are you talking about? Anyways, it's not a good idea for you to be at the front door for so long. And I can't be there, so please, kill the time or go on home. Wait, can't you bring me the keys over lunch break or something? What's the meaning of a lunch break if I don't get any break? I need to eat. No, you don't. You think lunch is more important than me? As I said, you can go home. I'm not getting off until 5 p.m. How dare you! To think I came for nothing! You should have called beforehand, or talked to your son. I can only be at home on the weekends. I know that, but you should get off work on the days I come. I didn't know you were coming, okay? I just got a text. He's woken up. Oh, good for you. I'll be waiting inside, till you come back. Come home soon. What? You don't need to wait up for me. Are you there, Tina? <coughs> Tina, how long are you intending to stay? As long as I want. It's my right as a mother. That may be so, but it's draining our schedule. Uh, how rude! My son says he has still three days off. I'm planning to stay for the time being. You don't mind, do you? No, but would your husband be okay alone? I don't care about him. He keeps on complaining on everything I do. I think it's the best for us if I just never went back, you know. What do you mean by that? I mean, I would come live with you too. That will teach my husband a lesson. I don't think that's a good idea. Did you two fight? Not a fight to be exact. I said to him that we should live in with our son and make for their own good. He objects. Haha, <sighs> that's the reason of the fight. Yes, so it clearly involves you. But then, he was really mean to me. Let the newlyweds have their space, he says. Right, now I get it. I'm just concerned about your future. What if one of us gets sick? Or if you have grandchildren? We should be supporting each other, don't you think? I think that doesn't mean we should live together in the same house. What are you talking about? Your husband is my only son. He is the one who will take care of us in our old age. Our grandchild is our precious heir. I need to supervise your parenthood, or else who knows how the poor child will end up. Even if we have children, they will be our child before your grandchild. I will bring him up how I would want to. No way. I can't allow that. This is why you are not suitable for my son. Suitable? A bride's only job is to deliver a baby. Bringing up a child should be done by the groom's experienced parents. My husband and I will make the child a proud heir. I have never heard such a thing. So you're saying you're going to take away my child from me? Yes, 
You're working full-time anyways and won't have time to care. And if there's a possibility you would quit your job after childbirth, all the pressure is on our son. I have every right to bring up my own child. You can take them away from me. It's not normal. Oh, but it is. You just don't understand it. Hmm. What you're saying is, my husband and his sister was brought up by their grandparents as well. Not in their case. I didn't have a job. What? Then I'll quit mine. Huh? If your husband brought food to the table and you nurtured the children at home, it won't be that different for your son to work and for me to be a stay-at-home wife. You're not listening to me. This will be a burden for him. It's a burden for me too. I have to take care of someone's life at home. Stop squibbling, you. I don't intend on having a child I can't parent. We're not stable enough as it is. <laughs> You're already 27. When I was your age, I already gave birth to two. Different times and different measures. If we had twice the income and savings, then we might think about having children. How come you don't have enough savings? You both work jobs. You don't know? Figures. I've been trying to tell you. Your son's unemployed. Don't lie to me. That isn't possible. It's your fault you can't manage the books. You must be on a spending spree or something. Ah, uh, I only get my hair done twice a year. I work full time every day. And I on a spending spree? What kind of meds are you on? I heard from my own son. He's been working so hard and you make him do house chores. Uh huh? Who's working so hard? My son! He's lying to you. He spends his day playing games and the least he can do is housework. I think it will be good for him. That's enough. You don't get a say in what your husband does. If he doesn't want to do the chores, then tell him to go get a job and earn more than me. I don't want any part in this argument. You'll regret this. I'm telling you. <sighs> if you say so. I don't care in the slightest. I'm going back to work. Wait, we're not done yet. Are you there, Mick? <laughs> Is it true you're going to be away this weekend on a business trip? Yes. Then I'll stay over again this week while you're gone. My son and I need some bonding together. Ah, your son said he'll be out drinking with his friends. Won't be back till morning again. <laughs> I already talked to him about that. Okay, sure. Do whatever you want. I don't need your permission. It's my son's house. I need to check. You're only home on Sunday, right? That's the plan. I was thinking of popping to check in on my parents and be back by Sunday afternoon. Hmm, is that so? Why don't you stay with them for a while? It's closer to your office too. There will be too much luggage, and my files are back at the house, so I need to come home anyways. Oh, come on and have some time for yourself. My son and I are planning to declutter the house on Sunday. You know how he hoards stuff in his room. We were talking that I should get on with it while I'm there. Oh, very well. I can help. It's okay. You're always tired. We'll handle everything. Think of it as a small getaway. Me? Tired? A getaway? You said you were busy with work. It'll get dusty and noisy when we're cleaning. It's better for all of us. What are you up to? Mm, I'm not up to anything. You make me seem hateful. I was honestly just trying to help. Right. I'll take you up on the offer. I'll pack my things for the weekend and take them with me on a trip. I'll see you Monday then. Wonderful. Take as much time as you want. Oh, it still feels weird. I can't explain it. Uh, what is going on? Oh, you're back. How was the trip? Please explain. There's no explanation. It's as it seems. My son and I moved out. What? 
If you desperately want us to come back, apologize for what you've done. Beg for it in tears. We might consider. What will it be? <laughs> what do I need to apologize for? How can you be so selfish? Oh, you're the one that's selfish, disregarding both your husband and I. Won't have any children, always working and never cared for the family. It's as if you're wearing the pants in this house. You know there's a logic reason? I don't care about your reasoning. You want your husband back? Let all of us live together as a family. What? If you accept, then we'll tell you where we are. I guess I'll never find out then. What? Ugh, for the life of me, I don't give a damn about your whereabouts. But it will be inconvenient to live on like this. Can you have your son sign the divorce papers? Wait a minute, you aren't seriously letting us go? Dead serious. Actually, it's a dream come true. <laughs> I finally get the parasite out of my life. Huh? You are the parasite, the good-for-nothing wife. Nuh-uh, your son can't hold down a job. You aren't capable of listening anything that I say. Barging into my house and linger for days. Hold down who? Your son. I already told you. He's a damn couch potato. I have never heard of this. Why don't you look back at all of our texts? I explained it to you because you were so persistent. We talked about the house chores, don't you remember? My son hasn't told me anything. He did threaten me not to tell his parents. I try to keep quiet, but I've reached my limit. I can't keep his ego and check for him. Some useless ego he has. Are you making fun of him? Not only him, you too, Tina. What? My brilliant son, my apple in my eye. If only he didn't marry her. And so on, it makes me laugh. Your son is a no good man than you think. Have you no shame harassing us like that? Who's harassing who? You never cared about a word I said. That's because you never fully explained anything. I did, but you didn't believe me. N no, you choose to speak so we can't comprehend. Fine, I'll start from the top. Keep your eyes and ears open this time, okay? Huh? Your son quit his job three months ago. Since then, he hasn't looked for a new employment and became the loser couch potato that he is. Who are you calling a loser? Your precious son, of course. I'm the one bringing food to the table, working my ass of morning to night. I paid for your living while you stayed with us. You see how it won't help me or you financially if you lived with us? I, I don't believe you. My son can't be. I was waiting for him to get on his knees and beg for mercy while he would hunt on a job. But that never happened. And even allowed you to manipulate our lives. The nerve. Wait, wouldn't it be beneficial for you to live with us? How would it be beneficial? More people equal more chores. I have never seen you help us in the house, like doing the laundry or cleaning the dishes. I just thought I should respect not to touch others' belongings. Respect? <laughs> you talk of respect when you barge in your son's house unannounced? You care about that? Well, I... Besides, you just went back to your own house, didn't you? Judging by the heavier belongings that are still here, my guess is that you couldn't afford to have someone carry them. Your son's unemployed and he doesn't have the money, not even to get a new place. I don't understand. This is the part where you beg us for our forgiveness. No way. If you want things done the way you want it, turn your personality around 180 degrees and have your son find a job for God's sake. It's your job as a wife to support your husband. Just because you have a job, big deal. And I supported him for months. That's what you're supposed to do. Well, I can't take any more responsibility in what he does. Good luck finding a suitor who can endure a loser of a husband and his blood-sucking mother. I highly doubt there will be one. You're not serious about the divorce? Of course I am. You started this war. I was only taking a chance. 
To be honest, I'm really happy. It's like the trash took itself out. <laughs> By the way, I had the locks changed, so don't bother coming to visit. Why would you do that? That's still my son's house. Actually, no. It's my house. I bought it when I was still living on my own. And I have a strict policy. No losers allowed. <laughs> Screw you. You'll regret what you've done. Uh, don't worry. I won't. I'm starting a new life for myself and only myself. You're leaving your husband for good? That's what I'm saying this whole time. I give up. <laughs> have fun bonding together. If I don't get the signed divorce papers in a week, expect to see me in court. Brace yourselves. Court? Wait, you can't embarrass us that way. Then, have the papers ready in a week. Oh, and there's no property worth splitting in this house, so don't expect to get anything from me. It's time you start paying for your keep. Huh? Hold on a second. Hey, are you listening to me? Mick! A few hours later, there were some disturbances caused by two people outside of my house, so I got the father-in-law to pick them up. He put his foot down on them. The divorce papers arrived several days later, so I sent them their remaining possessions, and I myself moved out of that house. Being alone gave me the opportunity to save up. Now I can have the luxury to spend money on myself. I had a little regret of not getting rid of those parasites long ago. But you only live life once, and I want to give life to the fullest from now on. Alright, so we're gonna go and meet my parents tomorrow, right? I'm a little worried about something, so I thought that I should warn you before we go. What are you worried about? I just spoke to my parents on the phone, and it looks like my dad... Uh, well, it sounds like he really has got something against you. What? Really? But we've never even met before. What could he have against me? Is he really that protective of you? Kind of. It's more like he thinks that we gotta marry into someone that's worthy of being in our family, since I guess you can say that we have it all. We have the education, the money, the influence. I mean, all of our family has graduated from a renowned university. He wants the people that join our family to be just as high up on the ladder as we are. So? What's the problem? I went to a pretty famous university too. Or is it not famous enough? Well, yeah, the problem isn't you exactly, it's your background. I didn't know that your dad was a single parent. You've never told me that he raised you by himself. But my dad knew somehow. Wait, wait, I told you that my mom passed away. I didn't think that I would have to tell you that that means that my dad is a single parent. Well, I knew about your mom, but I didn't think that he was still alone. When you hear that someone's from a single parent household, you get the impression that they're not exactly financially stable. You understand that, right? What? Troy, what are you even saying? That doesn't make any sense at all. Do you understand that that's called prejudice? Anyway, I think that's why my dad doesn't like you. My mom told me that he's been in a bad mood recently because of that. So I just want you to be careful with what you say to him tomorrow. We don't want to anger him any further. You're telling me to be careful? How am I supposed to do that? I haven't even done anything wrong, so how am I supposed to take care not to make him angry? I'm not gonna walk around on eggshells. I don't understand where this is all coming from, but if he already hates me, then obviously there's nothing I can do about it. I'm just going to be myself and work towards getting to know him and have him get to know the real me. Everything's going to be fine, so you don't have to worry. You've got a lot of nerve coming into my house and trying to slither your way into my family. A woman like you doesn't deserve to be with my son. You're beneath him. You should take that back, Mason. You're being extremely rude. You were insulting my dad, too. What you've said is absolutely unforgivable. You and that father of yours, did you really think that you could become a part of our family if you got closer to my son and married him? You're beneath us. You don't have the right. You must be stupid if you think that I'm going to let you get away with this. I'm not interested in becoming family with someone who speaks like that to someone they've only just met. And the prejudices you have against single parent households is just ridiculous too. I don't want to have anything to do with your so-called super elite family. You don't have the right to reject us. We're the ones that want nothing to do with people like you. 
You must have thought that marrying into our family was a chance for you to become rich yourselves. But you're not getting your dirty hands on any of my money. And you're not marrying my son either. If you keep on acting like a gold digger like that, then you'll never get married. It's no wonder you're still single at your age. Excuse me? There's no point in trying to hide it. I heard from Troy that you're older than he is. Which means that you're over 30. If a woman's not married by the time she's 25, that can only mean that something's wrong with her. In other words, you're after our money. You can't trick me, you're a fortune hunter. You should take a good look at yourself and your background before you go out and try and find another victim. Next time, you should aim a lot lower instead of trying to reach for someone that's out of your league. You and my son were never going to make it as a couple. He's too good for you. And you only have your ignorance to blame if you can't realize that. Mason, I think you should be careful with what you say to me. You're going to regret being this rude, and you'll wish that you could take it back when it's too late. <laughs> Why should I take care with what I say to you? You're just a gold digger. I can say whatever I like to someone like you. Do you want to know why? It's because someone with your background doesn't have the power to stop me. You say that I'm going to regret this. <laughs> As if. What can you do to make me apologize? Nothing! I understand the love you have for your only son, and wanting the best for him, including the best partner, but that doesn't mean that you can talk to people however you want. You were rude enough to insult me and my father the minute I walked through your door, and now you've gone out of your way to contact me online just to continue your verbal abuse. It's pathetic. And you really consider yourself a part of the higher end of society? As an elite? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. And you wouldn't, since you're not one of us. We have pride in being elites, and we have a duty to uphold our reputation. If I let Troy marry you, it would mean the end of that reputation. Especially now that I know your father didn't even go to high school. An embarrassment like that has to be avoided at all costs. Excuse me? How did you even find out about that? My dad's never told you that, and I've never told Troy either. How did you find out about my dad's education? And about my dad being a single parent? It seems like Troy never told you, so how did you know? I guess it's difficult for a poor person like you to understand. Rich people have their own ways of finding information that someone like you could never dream of. It must be a shock, but this is proof that you would never have made it in our family. Enough with the derogatory comments. Would you hurry up and tell me how you found out about my dad? You're starting to creep me out. You? Ordering me around? God, you even sound uneducated. But I'll tell you, it's easy for me to hire someone to investigate someone like you. Money makes the world go round, and having a lot of money myself, <laughs> I could do whatever I want. I have the sort of education that you can only dream of, and with it I can have a career that's out of your reach, and money that you'll never get. Once someone is born into the lowly circumstances you're stuck with, they can never escape it. The only life you'll ever know is lacking in financial stability, lacking in good education, and wanting of good morals. You really sound like you're enjoying this. But I'm warning you. I'm going to report everything you've said to my dad. Do whatever you like, I doubt that he can ever do anything to me. Oh, and maybe it was difficult for an idiot like you to understand, but the engagement is off. You're not marrying my son. I'm not going to allow you to marry into our family, not now and not ever. We've all been to top universities in our country. Why should we let someone like you get in our way? I never imagined that my own fiancé's husband would cancel the engagement, but I'm not upset by it at all. If anything, I'm relieved. The only thing I'm disappointed about is that your son wasn't the man I thought he was. Now I know what he's really like, I don't want to marry him. I've already told him that I don't want to marry him myself. I'm not interested in becoming family with someone who thinks that he can insult people based on their education. And he didn't even try to defend me while you were shouting abuse at me. He was too afraid to argue back to you. When I saw that he wasn't even going to try and come between us, I lost all of my feelings for him. It made me wonder why I even fell in love with him in the first place. Our family has a strong bond. Of course he wouldn't talk back to me for a woman like you. He knows better than that. It takes an education to teach people who they should really side with. And he made the right choice by not defending you. We don't need someone like you disrupting our family bond. I told you I have no intention of marrying your son anymore. So there's no need for you to talk down to me like that. I made the right choice by hiring that private investigator to look into you and your family. What? 
I found out a lot of interesting things about you. I didn't want some random woman making her way into my son's life and getting her dirty hands on our money. I should have been more wary and stopped him from even dating a woman like you, but at the very least I managed to stop him from ruining his life by marrying you. You actually went out of your way to investigate us? Wow, you're so committed. So you really think that your family's reputation is worth that much effort to protect? You must think very highly of yourself. Of course I do. Our family is special. We have dignity, unlike people like you. The private investigator informed me that your father didn't even go to high school. There's no way that I can let you start a family with our Troy knowing that you're going to mix your uneducated blood into our family. You're not marrying Troy, and that's final. Well, my dad says that you're fired. What? I'm tired of talking to you, so I've already told him everything that you've said to me. At first, I was willing to just accept breaking off the engagement because Troy and I were probably just not meant for each other. And I was willing to ignore how rude you had been to me when I visited. But you've gone too far, Mason. You said too much about me and my dad, and now we're both furious. My dad's shocked that you could be so discriminatory and has decided he doesn't want you working in his company anymore. What the hell are you talking about? He can't do anything to me. He's just a middle school graduate. He doesn't have the power to fire me. Listen to me, Mason. You're working in the company that my dad founded after he graduated from middle school. He's your employer, asshole. What did you say? Let me correct myself. You're not even working in his company. You're working in some distant child company that doesn't even have much affiliation with him. What are you talking about? You don't even know what he looks like, do you? The CEO of your parent company? You wouldn't, because you don't have any reason to. Since you're not even a manager of any kind, you're just a simple office worker. But you should have gotten his picture when you investigated us, right? How about you look up the CEO of the company you're working for? I think you'll recognize him because he'll have the same face as the man in the picture who you got from your P.I. What? You're kidding. I'm not. Look it up and see for yourself. If you take a look at the company homepage, you'll find my dad's picture. It's true. It really is the same picture. No way. Your father is the CEO of our parent company? That's why I warned you not to insult my dad. So... How does it feel to be fired by the very guy that you were insulting for being beneath you and inferior to you? Is it embarrassing? Do you feel humiliated? I hope so, because you definitely deserve it. Wait a minute, is this really true? Are you the CEO's daughter? But why? I didn't know, I, I didn't know about any of this. The investigator never told me that your father owned a company, let alone the company that I work at. What, did the P.I. only tell you that my dad was a middle school graduate? That's a shame. You must have wasted a lot of money to get that lousy information. But even if you didn't know, nothing's going to change my dad's mind. You should just give up and work on fixing your manners and finding another job. I'm very sorry. What? I apologize for being so rude towards you and the CEO. I got ahead of myself and made a lot of unpleasant remarks that hurt you and your father. It was because I didn't know who you really were. If I did, I wouldn't have said that. I really regret my actions towards you, and I hope that you'll find it in your hearts to forgive me. Please, let me apologize. I'm sincerely, extremely sorry. It was unacceptable for me to speak to you like that. It's too late for you to start apologizing now. The damage has already been done. Besides, we're not interested in accepting your apology. Please, don't say that. I really didn't mean to insult you like that. Please, hear me out. It was the investigator's fault. They must have made a mistake and sent me the wrong information. I didn't mean to be so rude to you, okay? You've got to believe me. Oh, really? Then how about the lies about you going to university? I think I'm correct when I say you didn't go at all. But I guess you're trying to say that you didn't mean to lie about that as well. What? We already know the truth, Mason. We know that you haven't actually been to university. You lied about being a high school graduate. I can't believe what you're saying. I went to university. I went to one of the top universities in the country. That's why I got the job at your father's company. Because of my degree. You should be ashamed of yourself. You were putting yourself on a pedestal, declaring that you were better than everyone else because of your higher education. But in actual fact, you've never been to university. You're a high school graduate. 
My father had you investigated and found out everything for me. What? You investigated me? You're just a family of vain liars. Or rather, you're the vain one. You are trying to present yourself as a superior, important man with a reputation to uphold, but you were lying about everything. To your own family, too. I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't lied about anything. Of course you know what I'm talking about. You should know yourself whether you've been to university or not. There's no point lying to us anymore. My dad's already had you investigated by a PI because he was worried about the type of person you were. Huh? You hired a private investigator as well? Yeah. We found out that you're a high school graduate and that you lied about your education to get into my dad's company. My dad had no intention of getting in the way of my engagement to Troy. He just wanted to know what kind of person you were. He trusted my judgment and was willing to ignore what you had done as long as I really did want to marry Troy. He was going to give his blessing for the marriage, but apparently he's changed his mind. He's angry that you could be so insulting and that you spoke to me like that and has decided that he wants you gone. He's the CEO after all. He can't ignore that you faked your CV to get into his company. You already know that much. I never would have imagined that I would be investigated by someone else. I thought that I could hide the truth. If you're able to investigate someone else, you should keep in mind that someone might be investigating you, too. By the way, the PI that you hired was someone that my dad knows. You should know that he has a lot of influence over a lot of local business. What? He knows the investigator I hired? Yeah, the PI kindly let him know that he was his next target. So my dad asked him to keep his current position under wraps and chose what information they could leak to you. He wanted to see how you would react to the information you had been given. What? So you tricked me? So then I was just dancing to your tune without knowing it? Then it's not my fault that I reacted like that. You did it on purpose to make me look like the bad person. We've both done wrong in this situation, so why can't you just overlook what happened? Let's forget about all this. No way, you must be joking. The second you found out about my dad being a middle school graduate, you hated me before you even met me. And then, when I went to visit you with Troy, you looked down on me and insulted me. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I didn't know that my dad had investigated you until I told him everything you said, but I'm grateful that he did. I know that he was just thinking about me, and in the end, he didn't use that as a reason to try and get me to cancel the engagement. But you did. But it's not my fault. If I had known that you were the CEO's daughter, I never would have said any of this. I would never have disrespected you the way that I did, to you both, if I knew that he was my boss. I didn't know, so I didn't mean it. You've got to forgive me. Even if my dad wasn't the CEO of your company, you should never have spoken to me like that. You're the lowest of the low for demeaning me like that. Just because you found out that my dad didn't go to high school. You're obviously not fit to call yourself a father, since you've ruined the chance of a happy future your son might have had, and for lying to him about your own education. Plus, you're going to be fired, and won't be able to support your own family, despite priding yourself for being so well off. Please wait! You can't do this! You're gonna ruin my life for nothing! I haven't done anything wrong! Tell me! Tell me what I've done to deserve this! You still don't understand what you've done? I've already told you enough, so why don't you look back on what you've said to me this past hour and think about it? I don't want to have anything more to do with you or your son, so don't try to contact me again. If you'll excuse me, I've got better things to do. Wait a minute, I'll give you my blessing. You can marry my son. Were you even listening to me? My son says that he still wants to marry you. If I'll let you marry him, so please. He's told me that he's sorry and he wants to get back together, hasn't he? Why don't you? Just forget about everything I said to you today and make up with my son. You were both happy to marry him up until now. Are you going to let a few bad hours change that? Are you really that cold? Just marry him. If that's what you want to do, I won't stop you anymore. I didn't mean anything I said, so if you'll just forgive me. You're getting on my nerves, Mason, you and your son. There's no way I'll be able to forget what you said to me today, and there's no way I want to marry your son. I've already saved screenshots of the conversation we've had online, and I've already shared them with my dad. And I don't love your son anymore. It's as simple as that. He didn't even try to stop you or try to defend me. And if anything, he was telling me that I needed to be careful the night before we went to visit you. I've already told him that I'm not interested in forgiving him and that we're never getting back together. 
You can't do that. What am I supposed to do? I'm going to lose my job. How am I supposed to tell my family? They'll never forgive me. Oh, yeah, about that. I already told Troy that you lied to him and your family about being a university graduate. What? Your entire family knows that you've been lying this entire time. It seems like they're pretty disappointed. Good for you. Now you don't have anything to hide from them. Anyway, I'm leaving now. Don't ever contact me ever again. I don't want to become family with someone like you. So I'm never coming back. Goodbye. <laughs> After that, Mia ignored all of Mason's messages and calls. She officially broke off the engagement with Troy and let her parents know that she wasn't going to marry him. Mason's managers found out from Mila's father that he had been lying about his education and was fired immediately after. His entire family lost all trust in him when they found out the reasons behind him losing his job. He had been so wary of Mila damaging his reputation and had always been a very proud man, so he was even more embarrassed when they heard that he had never been to university. Troy blamed his father for everything that had happened between Mila and himself and didn't think to look back on his own faults before cutting ties with Mason. Mason's wife announced that she wanted a divorce, and Mason has been attempting to convince her to take him back. Without much success. They were calling themselves an elite, well-off family, but in the end, they've lost the strong bond that Mason believed they had and have all ended up living alone. Mila was relieved that she didn't have to marry a man with such a pretentious family, and was even thankful for Mason's treatment for helping her realize that she was making a mistake. <laughs>